Should we get started? Is this on? Okay. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the PG Rest talk. Um, so I'm CL from Taiwan, and uh, I usually speak to very different crowd. I come from uh, like a pro background, and uh, I'm quite new to Postgres, and but I've been doing open source stuff for about 15 years. And uh, what well, we can see, when I was hospitalized, I still do software. Um, and that's when I had a lot of free time, because no more outdoor activities. I start looking at Postgres and said, oh, this is really neat. Lots of crazy stuff. Not just like a database, you put things in and take things out. You can do a lot more than that. So right, I'm from Taiwan, so I'm from the future. Um, <laughs> and the last slide, uh, last talk from Andrew is about the, the future of uh, Postgres days and stuff, right? So. PGRS is kind of like a futuristic experiment of that kind of things. So what PGRS is is essentially like a JSON document store, like the particular database that people have been bashing about in this uh, conference. Um, but it runs inside Postgres. And the interesting bit is that it works with your existing data. You can kind of turn your existing relational data into more like a document store. You kind of like try to um, do the joining and the things transparently. And um, I'll show some example later. And you can actually load Node.js modules, like the NPM modules, into it and turn the, the um, whatever is on NPM or whatever your existing uh, JavaScript code into store procedure inside uh, Postgres and use those procedures as um, tools or transformation you need for producing your output. And MongoLab is, is a uh, MongoDB hosting service. So they have a REST API for uh, accessing data that is hosted by them. And uh, so we kind of um, steal the idea from there and then have a very similar um, and compatible API to that. And lastly, a couple of months ago, um, someone contributed a, a plugin for uh, PGRS that allows you to do like real time subscription to the data update, uh, similar to what uh, Firebase is offering. Does anyone know Firebase? It's a hosted, um, like a backend as a service thing, and uh, you have REST API and also WebSocket support. It has a nice JavaScript. Um, client API that you can do like subscribing changes to um, your data. So you can kind of do data binding um, in browser side and without a backend. So yeah, there's some, some, something similar to that. So um, to start using Postgres, it's um, it kind of most of the logic is inside Postgres as a store procedure, but you kind of still need a layer uh, to, to, to launch it. And right now that layer is in, uh, in Node.js. So you install the PGRES from NPM, so just NPM install globally. And then you can now start uh, PGRES with your existing database. And it kind of runs um, like turning, populating all your existing tables or relations or views into um, REST endpoint. So um, here's an example for uh, what we actually use in, in production is a Taiwanese um, parliament website. Hmm, there's a Russian parliament site. Uh, web uh, parliament side talk this morning, right? So, but this is not the official Taiwanese parliament. This is kind of the thing we, we read off from the, uh, the unstructured government side and turn it into a structured API and it's been powered by uh, PG REST. So, um, it's like this is a, a bill document and then the bill has a relation to motions where this bill was being discussed on and in several occasions, right? So, that kind of has been uh, flattened by um, PG REST when you define a view of what the, um, the bill you want to expose and the API is, where, where the, uh, the relation from motions are being joined there. But more details on that later. Anyway, so um, the database is people have been talking about in this conference about NoSQL, or I should call it a postmodern database, right? <laughs> and <laughs> it, it's got um, very popular for, for the past uh, few years because it's easy for people to just start using it. And I think it's a very constructive thing to, to like stealing from ideas from then because we are not like not only SQL, we got this all this improvement in Postgres as well. And uh, so I'm gonna just quickly um, go through some of the Postgres uh, features that we are exploiting and then turn it into the useful components for PGRES here. Um, the first thing, of course, is the JSON data type. I don't need to describe it because everyone knows about it. It's very exciting and very promising and very fast in 9.4. And uh, so um, um, since, I'm, like, like I say, I'm, I'm quite new to Postgres, so I, I'm kind of, uh, some of the uh, features are like um, not, probably not very interesting to this crowd, but I usually go through them to other people like 
uh, for example, a schema in Postgres is like namespace, so we can put, put uh, view, uh, uh, sorry, I'm going to also have uh, views being defined for uh, predefined queries and then triggers for uh, actions you can attach to uh, operation or insert and things like that. So schema is like, well, you can put um, prefix, like you collect a, a, a set of um, uh, relations or views or, or functions into a group, right? Like what we'd use for extensions, you can put things into schemas. And, um, and views are like predefined queries. So we can put complex, complicated queries and then with lots of joins or whatever into view, which is turned into like essentially a query, uh, 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 like, uh, like how you access a, a, a table. So um, in 9.3, there's also materialized view. And so in PGRES, the idea is that um, we map tables or relations into REST endpoint. And f because the, for, the, like, for the past 10 years, the, the web uh, development people are solving is like turning relational data into some kind of a flattened representation. Right? That's what you get from REST endpoint. And that's where you, you kind of need to decide if you want to join something or, or, or not. And so um, by providing the joined results in views, then, then we can just map the relation into the REST endpoint. And um, so um, next is the, the triggers. And this is the building component for uh, access control uh, in, Postgre uh, in PG REST. Um, so basically, you can, you can put just hooks onto uh, updates and, and, uh, and, and insert and delete and things like that. So, um, so that's probably all the things you already know. And the exciting thing um, for the past few years is, that is the JSON support, after the JSON support is the POVA extension, where you can start using uh, JavaScript to write store procedure in Postgres, right? So uh, the, the way you do it is you, you kind of create the function like that with a, a JavaScript body. And then you can just use it as a, as a store procedure by calling it as a normal um, function in Postgres. Well, but the thing is that when you have lots of this kind of store procedure written in JavaScript, it's really hard to maintain. So, um, so I, I, I created an extension called POVAX, which is um, essentially a way for packaging um, NPM modules and then put them into your Postgres database. And beyond that, um, there's additional operator being provided by this extension is that the pipe, uh, I'll call it pipe invoke uh, extension, which takes the left hand side as a JSON document and evaluate that to the right hand side JavaScript text and put in the left hand side as uh, the, uh, this uh, variable. So, um, so you can see that the expression here, uh, we actually get the, uh, the full element and the first element, which returns two. And you can do arbitrary expression like the plus here as well. And uh, like in the last talk, there's a, we're, we're talking about um, like there's no way to manipulate JSON efficiently. Uh, well, I mean, there's, this is not very efficient either anyway, but it's now making it possible. You can say update x and then set foo, where foo is the uh, JSON column and make the full, the new full being, the full being processed with like the bar element deleted and then return itself, okay? So the pipe, sorry, the pipe invoke operator is like applying your JSON column or, or uh, uh, document with the JavaScript uh, text on the right hand side. But there's also a tilt, a tilt invoke uh, operator which runs the right hand side as in CoffeeScript. So uh, for those of you who don't know, CoffeeScript is more um, modern JavaScript which, which transcompiles to CoffeeScript and uh, it has a lot of handy um, short, shortcuts like uh, the at operator is this. And so, so you can do that and, and it also has the implicit return for the expression functions. So that kind of, kind of turns it in, into a more readable form for applying the JavaScript, on, uh, applying the JSON document on left-hand side with this expression in CoffeeScript and return it. Okay, so that's the operator. But more importantly, what PLVAX is capable of is, is like loading your NPM modules into uh, Postgres. So uh, for example, there's a NPM module called QS, which handles the query param, like the usual uh, URL, uh, something equals something, and something equals something. 
uh, uh, form of, of, of the string. <coughs> and this module provides the parsing bit of that. And then to load it into um, um, Postgres is that you say, OK, POVAX import X, uh, QS, which is the module name. And then you say minus F, uh, this bit being the function in Postgres. So it's a function called parse underscore QS, which takes a text and returns a JSON. Uh, there's a prefix for POVAX.json because uh, we want to support it uh, for uh, 9.0 as well. So for 9.0, we we'll create a domain called uh, POVAX.json, which is like the, the, uh, just a text with the validation rules. And then the right-hand side, you say you want that, the parse underscore QS, to be, to be, to be the, the JavaScript function that is in the QS package uh, under the name parse. So you kind of like lifted it from the, um, from the QS package from NPN and find the parse function, which is exported by the module, and then turn that into a Postgres uh, store procedure. And now you can use it as, well, the, just a normal function in, in Postgres, now parse underscore QS with a text, and then it turns that into a JSON document. Okay, I'm not sure why you want to parse that kind of thing in Postgres, though. Um, but I actually found a use case for that. It's a uh, SkyTools PGQ, the, the uh, Q extension uh, from the Skype people. They actually store that kind of thing in, in Postgres. So if you need to process that in Postgres land, you will need that. OK, so, so with that, we can now um, <coughs> process the information in, in Postgres with, with anything written in JavaScript more easily that's been bundled uh, by, by NPM. And then uh, with that, you know, we can do functional index, and then now you can have um, like complicated calculation, like uh, but l written in properly packaged uh, JavaScript package rather than long string of create function, dollar dollar uh, crazy things store procedures. So now now um, you can do a lot more with that. So again, back to PG REST. Um, so. Running PG REST DB uh, would just turn your um, turn your existing database and the relations in there into REST endpoint, and it looks like something like this. Uh, once you start running the default, uh, but it's configurable, is um, in your local host and then collection builds, and it gives you um, a REST endpoint for um, just get and put and post and delete and things like that, and it has this um, some paging default uh, paging metadata, which you can uh, say you want to do like um, skip into the second page or something like that. That's similar to the MongoLab um, REST API I, I described earlier. Right, so that's an example for the output from the, the get endpoint. But essentially, um, the interesting bit is that you might think that um, this is like um, just like an ORM, like turning database thing into JSON and then doing the joining bits in there. No, not really. So um, it is actually inside PG. So when we have this request, it's being um, just processed very um, with very minimum processing, getting like to know what you're trying to do, like you're getting the collection bills. And then that was turned into a store procedure call, which says PG REST select and just selecting the calendar. Oh, sorry, it was a bill, sorry, it's wrong. Um, and, and you can do these query things like, um, this is from the, um, the uh, MongoLab uh, query API as well, so they have a very similar uh, query string to, um, to Mongo. And so that was also turned into part of the PG REST select uh, query parameters here. So this is like, everything is done as in part of the store procedure is wrong. So right now, um, the query you can use is, is with, um, is with the, 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 uh, the, the query string similar to, Mongo, uh, to, to MongoDB. But seeing the uh, JS query talk yesterday, I think maybe it, it makes more sense to, to have it like something like that here. And then, uh, but this is definitely like uh, pluggable, just a component for turning um, arbitrary structure into what is actually generating the query at the end. Okay, so for relational data, like 
uh, the thing I showed you in, in the beginning is like turning like a, um, individual tables into rest endpoint is like trivial, right? Just serialized JSON. But what about like something relational? You want to join something from other places. <laughs> Sorry. And so the way to, to do it is actually create a view. And then we have a DSL for generating a view declaration. So this is like, uh, for example, there's a calendar table. table, And then we want to join um, sorry, additional column called sitting, which is constructed from a uh, function call, which is like loaded from the PLVAX. Um, so you, you have this, uh, that the function here is the underscore calendar sitting ID. And that's turning some structure into like a, 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 a separate ID or something like that. Okay. A more comprehensive example here is like from another table, which is um, the sitting here is joining from uh, is joining with the calendar, but it's not really joining because it's doing a subselect, and then with the condition of for for matching the um, the relate, related data there. So this is actually pulling out different uh, three tables, and then turning that into like uh, the nested structure you need for your rest endpoint. Okay. So, um, so this, this pretty much covers the, the read-only bit that you can uh, turn your existing relational data into something uh, structural and nested and uh, flatten out uh, thing. You, you define it by view. And the way we do it is that um, you, you define those endpoints in uh, those views in, in a particular schema. And with PGREST, you can say, OK, the, this API is sharing every relation or re every views under this schema. So you have your normal data, which is the normal relational one under public. And then what we do is we create um, additional layer of, of views, which are like under PGREST. So as you can see here is the PGREST.sitting, which is constructed from the uh, public sitting table. So the view is more um, of the decorated ones that you get from uh, joining other data that you want to be represented in, in your rest endpoint. <laughs> so um, this covers the, the read part. And then for the, um, the ACL, which is more interesting part, is that, um, like, for example, in, in MongoLab, the hosted MongoDB um, services I mentioned, uh, you can. Um, the, the good part of it is that it's a REST endpoint already. So you can have your, like a web, uh, your web client uh, just talk to the, the endpoint. But the problem is that the ACL is, is all or none. When you have an SS key, you can write to all, all the data. Otherwise, it's read only. So it's not very useful for that being a full featured API endpoint, per se, because you, like, you have no access control for uh, the data in it. So the way that uh, we, we, we see that this will work is, um, for example, because we have this on update rules or triggers, and you can say do instead something. right? So when we create a view, which is actually being served as the read-only API endpoint, you can optionally create rules when it's being updated on, or inserted on, or deleted on, and then do additional AP, uh, ACL checks here. So um, a more practical. Uh, Example here is um, is um, wh when you when you have your API endpoint being accessed with uh, access token uh, like a, the nowadays now people everyone does the uh, OAuth bearer and then so so in your um, so this is the thin layer of the server when when that is also extracted when you have an authorization header you turn that into part of the um, command uh, part part of the parameter into the PGREST select or PGREST update uh, calls. So from there, <laughs> you get those um, additional metadata into the PG param, uh, PG param, uh field. And then, uh, wrong. And then in, in your uh, rules that's doing the, the instead ACL check, you can, you can use the PGREST underscore PG param a way to, to extract that. And uh, as you can imagine, probably you'll do, be doing 
the token validation or populating the user from the token, populating the group ownership from the token, and then do the actual check there. And then if it doesn't work, I mean, if it's like forbidden, you just throw exception here. Otherwise, you do the original update. So that's how th that's the infrastructure. But there, um, there, there should be a library for making all these kind of things a lot easier. And uh, so, but it's not there yet. But uh, the infrastructure there is there. And then, uh, okay. So that's the, uh, the the assets control bit, and this is how how we imagine it, it will work. And there, there are actual um, working example for for that already, but um, it's in in something not not in, in the public code yet. Um, so next up is the the real time API for um, it it is it is part of the PGS WebSocket uh, plugin, and it, once you install it, um, it will create triggers on the tables that you're interested in, and now you can. This is the uh, similar to the Firebase API, but you can just say, okay, I want to start listening to this endpoint. And so this is from the links collection. And every time it's updated, the callback will be called. So you have kind of like a transparent way of processing the uh, updates from, from the client side. Okay, so um, that's what we've been doing for about a year or so. And because uh, this is like a, a hobby project, and then several people are working on that, and so it's not like it, it is well, it's not super actively being developed on, but there are actual production use of it. And uh, the read-only part is quite robust, but the the part requiring ACL control and the stuff is um, needs a lot more work. And then I appreciate your your comments and how you feel it's 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 usable or crazy or something like that. So what's next will be lots more documents and the simplified authentication authorization integration I mentioned. There's already a plugin for integrating uh, third-party uh, authentication like uh, Facebook, Twitter, just the normal OAuth thing. And with that plugin, you get the access token, uh, as I described, that, that should be used along with the ACL. And, um, but there should be a lot more uh, simplified um, libraries around that to, to do more fine-grained control and, and stuff like that. And also, like, the way we envision this to work is like, uh, now there's only very tiny, uh, thin layer of server for translating your uh, request into the pgrest underscore select or update calls, right? So that can actually go away with the gentleman yesterday mentioned in the uh, Lightning talk. There's like a HTTP protocol layer in, he has a prototype of it. So maybe that, when, when we hook up that into the store procedure there, we will have a serverless environment, just a bit speaking HTTP. Or there's a, um, a Nginx plugin, which is called Nginx Postgres, uh, which also does the translation from HTTP requests into Postgres uh, um, queries, right? So we can map that into the store procedure call, which is a, a simple mapping because you have the URL, you have the HTTP verb method, and you turn that into the corresponding um, corresponding store procedure code in Postgres. And then, yeah, we get like serverless thing, right? No, no server-side logic. And there will be just one thing to scale. And uh, so the real-time um, real uh, support that I mentioned in the last slides, it's, it's very exciting to a lot of people, and uh, uh, I, I know some people are trying to build um, like wrapper libraries around that. So you can get uh, just a, a PG REST endpoint up and running, and then you have um, just the data updated from the client side, so you don't really see anything on the server side. Oh, that's already mentioned. The um, the Nginx Postgres uh, plugin is already there, and then I actually tried it already with with the uh, binding, and there's some weird problem with like when you have two queries or something, and then, but, uh, but it's basically working. It's, it's quite amazing, because um, with, with that, I actually have the Nginx talking to uh, PG REST directly. So there's no more server code. There's no more Node.js or Python layer of the, the thing that connects to Postgres. It's done in Nginx. So, um, so I think this is quite new, a thing, and then uh, lots of crazy ideas in it, exploiting um, some of the 
greatest uh, Postgres features that, I mean, out of, like from my background as like an ap application developer, a lot of the crazy Postgres features I did not know about. And then, so um, once I know that, I said, okay, I can combine and try to do something with that. And then, and this is the experiment, and this is the, the stuff we've been building. So um, that's pretty much my talk. Um, Endpoint for uh, the Congress uh, website readdown in Taiwan. Uh, so we have. So by the way, I, I, I run a project called gov0.tw. So it's like the gov, in government in Taiwan's gov.tw, right? So we build something called gov0. So like for the government website, you change one letter and suddenly it becomes a better website with proper API and stuff like that. <laughs> okay, so that's the Congress website for Taiwan uh, down right. So this is the actual uh, Congress bill and we have it represented in a nice uh, diff format. And so that's a uh, client only application in Angular. So the raw data is from JSON, which is powered by uh, PG REST. And this is actually joined from several tables, I think. So, um, so we have that. Sorry, I, you probably can't read anything uh, <laughs> this year. So, um, yeah, we, we have the, like, this bill is being, uh, like, gone through several processes in uh, different committees or, or uh, whole, whole Congress sitting or something like that. And the amendment it contains is regarding uh, two chunks of the laws and, and things like that. So, so this is actually, uh, I think, joined from five different tables because we have the Congress website, we have the Congress library website, and uh, other things. And then kind of cross-referencing all together created a, a huge view on that and then turned that view into API endpoint just with that. So there's no actual server code for that. It's basically what the view describes is the API endpoint. 